Welcome back to Game Theory 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today's topic is the devious reason big companies like regulation. Every now and then, you'll hear about a company in the news that is actively promoting its government to implement some level of regulation on its industry that will make it more difficult for that company to produce its main products. You could think about this like pollution. It might be that in the process of creating its product, there's some sort of carbon emission that comes along with it. And the company goes to the government and says, hey, carbon emissions are very bad. What we need is heavier regulation in our own industry to prevent that sort of externality. Oftentimes, the response that you'll hear from commentators is praise, that the company is doing something that is ultimately going to hurt its bottom line for the betterment of society as a whole. And it may be true that passing that particular regulation may reduce externalities in a way that will improve societal welfare. But it's a bit of a rush to a conclusion to say that the company is not doing this in its own self-interest. Let's talk about why that might be the case. Your initial intuition might be that regulation makes production more expensive for companies. And thus, companies, broadly speaking, should not want regulation that targets them and their industries. And perhaps this is doubly true for a market leader in a particular industry. After all, if it is selling more of the product than anyone else out there, it stands to reason that it would be disproportionately impacted by that regulation. But it's critical to keep in mind that this regulation occurs in the context of a broader competition between a leading firm and other firms out there in the market. And there might be a second order effect of regulation that ends up allowing the big company to do better as a consequence of that regulation. How could that be? Well, regulation doesn't always have the same effect on all companies. Bigger companies in particular may have better infrastructure to handle regulation than smaller companies do. That is to say, when you have regulation being imposed, there is a larger impact on the smaller companies and a tinier impact on the larger companies in terms of their marginal cost of production. As a result, this difference can give the bigger company a competitive edge and ultimately allow that company to profit more. We can see this by doing a simple manipulation to a standard Cournot duopoly model. In previous lectures, we've seen what the profit is under standard circumstances. If we have unregulated competition, then the profit for firm one is this constant A plus the marginal costs for the second firm minus two times firm one's marginal cost, all squared, divided by nine. Let's compare that to the case with regulation. Suppose that regulation increases firm I's marginal cost of production by a constant RI. We're going to make RI greater than one and then multiply each firm's original cost of production by that scalar. So both of them are going to have an increase in their marginal cost of production as a consequence of the regulation but we are not assuming that it's affecting both of the firms at the same rate. From here, we can obtain firm one's profit function by simply replacing C1 and C2 with R1C1 and R2C2. And if we do that, we now have firm one's profit with regulation as that constant A plus R2C2 minus two times R1C1, all squared, divided by nine. The central question is whether firm one prefers its profit when there is no regulation to when there is regulation. And that's what we're comparing at the top bullet point. On the left side of the inequality is firm one's profit under regulation, and on the right side is firm one's profit without regulation. If we do a lot of manipulation, we eventually see that firm one prefers regulation as long as R1 is less than one plus the quantity of C2 times the quantity R2 minus one, all divided by two times C1. If we analyze the right-hand side of that final inequality, 
we see that it is a quantity that is strictly greater than one. That's because we are taking one and adding some other strictly positive amount. What that's telling us is that we can increase firm one's marginal cost of production by some positive amount, that is R1 is some value greater than one, but as long as it is not too large, it's still going to be the case that firm one prefers the regulation. What's going on here? Well, the intuition is fairly straightforward. If you look at the right-hand side, you'll notice that the right-hand side gets larger as R2 gets larger. In other words, it is easier for firm one to profit in the presence of this regulation, as long as firm two is suffering a great deal in terms of the regulation. And if you think about that a little bit more, then it really does make sense. Firm one may have to pay a little bit more in terms of its marginal cost of production. But if firm two is really screwed over by the regulation, then firm two is going to massively decrease how much it is producing and putting into the market. That drives up prices and in turn allows firm one to profit more, despite the fact that it is having to pay more to produce its goods. That wraps up this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Take care.